Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about how to linearize data, and in the process we're going to learn more about how we figure out physics relationships. So, this is primarily for physics students or AP physics students, and the issue is, maybe you've wondered this in the past, how do we come up with these equations? How do we figure out these equations based on real-world data that describe how our universe works? Equations like dealing with gravity, or the attractive force and the repulsive force between charged objects, or all kinds of equations that help us to understand physics in our natural universe. So this is a really important tool. What I'm going to be going over is a really crucial tool to be able to understand how that is done. So there are six major types of sets of data that you're going to have to become familiar with and be able to spot more or less what these things are to be able to help you understand and let me just dive in. Let me talk to you about what you might see. So for instance, you might see something like this. And what that would mean is as X changes, there's no real significant change in Y. So what we would say here is that there is no relationship. It just is what it is. And you might think that that's a bit of a failure or a failed hypothesis, but actually that is oftentimes very important information. To find out that one thing does not affect another thing sometimes can be really useful to learn. All right, well, what if we had data that looked something like this? Well, that would be what's called a linear relationship. And we would say that y is proportional to x. And so if you take a look at this, this is alpha, a Greek letter. Don't ever let that freak you out. Sometimes we use Greek letters in physics, and it just means that y is proportional to x. That means if x was like three times greater than what it was before, then y would be three times greater. This can also work in a negative sense if you have a negatively sloped line, something like this. This is still more or less a linear relationship, something like that. It just has a negative slope. All right, another type of relationship you might need to deal with or see would be data that would look something like this. You could call this a side opening parabola. And really crucial here is that y squared is going to be proportional to x. So y squared is proportional to x. And the more you deal with this, the more this will make sense. Like to make this into a straight line, we would have to square the y value and leave the x as is. That's what this means right here in terms of this related equation. Now these you're just going to have to memorize or know them well enough conceptually. You don't necessarily have them memorized, but you can play around with the numbers and figure out what the relationship is. And I'm going to show you that in a little while with actual data as if you were doing an experiment and trying to figure out what the relationship was. All right, next up we would have something like this. This would be considered to be a top opening parabola. And the relationship here is going to be that y is proportional to x squared. Really crucial that you either know that or can come up with that. This next one, if you see data that looks something like this, this would be an inverse relationship. Notice that it's got a curve to it, but it doesn't have as severe as a curve as the next one I'm going to show you. And so this would be an inverse squared relationship. And so for our inverse relationship, we're going to say that y is proportional to 1 over x. And for our inverse squared relationship, we're going to say y is proportional to 1 over x squared. All right, so what I'm going to do is show you how to work with actual numbers as if you were doing a lab where you had to come up with a relationship between two different things using these ideas here. But before I do that, I want to quickly show you what I mean by the things I'm going to be talking about. So I'm going to talk about the force between two charged objects. So what you're going to see here are two charges that repel each other, A and B, kind of like magnets that would push away from each other. The closer you bring them together, the greater the force is going to be. But that force is not a linear relationship. It's some other relationship that we want to discover what that relationship is. All right, and so let's imagine you have these two data sets right here. We've been able to do a lab where we come up with the force between two charged objects, and we measured the distance between the two charged objects, and we get these forces over here. 
and we're trying to determine the relationship between them. So the first thing that I can do, and you can do this in Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets, I prefer Sheets, so I'm gonna go ahead and just click both of these. How did you do that? Well, I'm holding down the control key when I select the second data point. You can do exactly the same thing. So in Sheets, you're gonna to go to Insert Chart, is what it's called, Chart. You're gonna make a chart out of this data. I'm gonna pull it over here so we can see what's going on. I've got a chart editor on the right. I'm not gonna use that right now, but hopefully you get the idea. Now, if you take a look at this data, it's actually a little unclear if we're dealing with an inverse relationship or an inverse squared relationship. We just don't know at first glance. It does actually look a little bit more like an inverse relationship, but let's test it out. Let's throw this data into Google Sheets and see if we can come up with the best linearized data that we can get so that our mathematical model of reality matches what's actually happening in reality. So I don't want to plot distance between charges. Let's try plotting one over the distance between charges. So I'm just going to type equals one divided by and this cell over here, I'm gonna click and hit the enter key. And I can go ahead and fill the rest of this because it will follow the same pattern. The program is smart enough to do that. And now let's take this, and instead of plotting the two data sets that we had previously, let's plot these two and see what happens. All right, so what do you notice here? Well, I will point out that notice that the data itself, it's not entirely straight. At first glance, it may appear to be straight, but actually it may still be more curved. So let's try the inverse squared relationship and see what happens here. One divided by this squared. So I'm hitting shift six for the up caret and a two over here. And that we can go ahead and fill in the rest of these. Now what I can do is let's try, instead of plotting that distance or one over the distance, let's plot one over the distance squared versus the force between the charges. What I get is not what I want. Let's go back, scatter plot. All right, so my axes are messed up. Um, you may have to play around with this a little bit, like my labels are not correct. But I guess I do want to just point out, though, mathematically and graphically, if you take a look at this, the graph on the right is a linear line. It's a straight line, more so than the graph that we have in the middle. So this more accurately linearizes the equation. And you could say, well, what do we do with that? Well, we know what this shows is that the y value is proportional to 1 over x squared. In this case, the y was the force, so the force is proportional to the inverse squared value of the distance between the center of both charged objects. So we've learned something about reality by working with data, and if we were writing an equation based on this, we could come up with two very important parts of the puzzle, so to speak, of what's called Coulomb's Law. So hopefully this has been helpful. If you have any comments down below, please let me know, and I hope you all have a great day. Take care.